55 people. It, it's great to have 75 people on this call. It's significant. Um, talking about another big step forward when it comes to helping the individual that finds him or herself homeless, whether that be a child, young adult, um, adult of any age. Um, I know Drew in particular has um, led a very organized and thorough effort that's consistent with everything that we do. We try to find the best in class operators that truly add value and support them and do our best to encourage the politicians to look at it the same way. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Dan. So oh, thank you, Pete. The only uh, comments I want to make are to thank everyone on the call. This is an incredible distance from where we, where we were six years ago. It takes an absolute collaboration of everyone in the space to make this work right and to have so many people coming together to work on these issues is very heartwarming. So other than that, Drew, it's your program. All right. Um, I'll quickly cover some of the objectives for today and and before I do that, I just want to thank the donors that and board members that make this go for Lucky Duck. This is all funded through uh, uh, donations to the Lucky Duck Foundation on top of uh, the matching gifts from Pat and Stephanie Kilkenny to, to make this happen. And so we're excited to invest another million dollars into employment job training opportunities. And, and uh, again, it doesn't happen without the, the people behind us and our work um, so I want to thank them and, and also thank Will Shea our program manager for, for pouring, all, pouring over and through all of these proposals uh, as well as Dan Novak and, and Stephanie Kilkenny and our executive committee to uh, make sure that we met with leadership from each organization on top of you know really understanding each proposal and, and, and doing our due diligence on each one so um, the objectives for today in my mind, there's three of them. It's, we want to highlight each program that Lucky Duck is supporting so that as many people as possible know about these different programs that exist so that as many people can benefit from them and get connected to them. And, you know, hopefully at the end of this, you go, wow, those are eight or 10 different programs I didn't know existed that I can direct people I'm working with or, or clients or other parties to these opportunities to, again, help as many people um, benefit from these as, as possible. Two, we want to highlight new partnership opportunities and, and incentives that will be available and, and added to this, um, to this particular or this second iteration of this program, as well as some new employment opportunities that will be available through this effort. And then the third is, is to share some uh, relevant facts about employment amongst those that are experiencing homelessness. Uh, we've got Pat Leslie from Point Loma Nazarene on the, on the Zoom to walk us through some of those. We, many of you probably know, we brought all the local research institutions together to, to study homelessness. And, and one of them was employment and the need for job training and, and employment programs and the efficacy of some of those programs. Um, so before I turn it over to her, just two I think, quick facts that, that I've just learned of recently that I think are, are fairly relevant. Typically, the homeless pop, population, 70 to 75% is unemployed. Well, over the past year, from October 1 of 2020 to October 1 of 21, 90% of the homeless population was homeless. So uh, uh, obviously trending in the wrong direction and, and all the more reason in our view, we need more programs like this. About 50% of homeless folks have, have some level of benefit, but 40% have zero benefit. So while we continue to, to do everything in our power to add shelter beds and find other housing opportunities and, and, and pathways for people to end their homelessness and move into, um, into something that provides a brighter path. These are programs that will uh, really empower people and equip people to improve their 
uh, circumstances. So those are, again, the objectives for today and, and just a few high level facts um, about experiencing homelessness and, and the need for employment or the lack, uh, the lack thereof for, for opportunities. So again, thanks everybody for joining us with that. Pat, uh, Leslie, if you want to kind of just walk us through some of your research findings from Point Loma and Azarine that I think hopefully will sure. help our thinking uh, here. Thanks for the invitation. And I'm going to see if I can share my screen successfully for just a couple of slides. Um, let's see. Here we go. Here. And then from the beginning. Here we go. I'm hoping that you can see a, a, a cover slide, a title slide that says Key Findings on Employment and Homeless Projects. Um, as Drew said, I'm Pat Leslie, and I'm actually a faculty emeriti from Point Loma Nazarene University and had the opportunity to look at um, employment issues and homelessness through a couple of grants that um, uh, the Lucky Duck Foundation supported. So today is, we're just going to take a few minutes to look at some key findings. There's a much more extensive report, um, but key findings about employment and homelessness. And these come from uh, the, the work that was done for these projects. So prior research and projects um, show that the both in San Diego and nationally, about 45% of homeless persons were seeking employment um, at the time that they were contacted. And then in San Diego, 53% of the persons contacted in general, um, not just those who are seeking employment, cited affordable housing as a key to solving homelessness. That doesn't surprise us. What did surprise us was even a higher percentage, 57%, cited employment as the key factor in resolving their homelessness. So um, that tells you the importance of, of employment for to those who are um, in need. So the Lucky Duck Foundation employment projects were compared with um, uh, continuum of care housing projects that had written employment agreements in it. So in the Lucky Duck Foundation, their primary focus was on um, employment and the housing continuum of care programs. Housing was their prime component, but uh, employment was uh, contracted in it as well. And so what doesn't surprise us, right, is the projects with a primary focus on employment and training had higher or better employment uh, outcomes than those uh, housing projects that had employment agreements. And that may sound subtle, but it's a significant difference in terms of looking at how we deploy funds for uh, employment. Right? So here's just some, some graphic um, presentation to show you the percentage in Lucky Duck Foundation and the two continuums of care we looked at um, in terms of that had contracted employment components to them. Of course, 100% of Lucky Duck did um, in one continuum of care, it was only 20% in the other continuum of care, it was almost 85% that had um, contracted agreements to do employment, so which means that they also had some level of support or subsidy. That the outcomes were pretty substantially different. As you can see on the right hand side, that um, about 56% of the Lucky Duck Foundation um, projects had, uh, excuse me, about 56% of the participants in the Lucky Duck Foundation projects um, were employed nine months into um, the project terms. And that for our continuums of care, only 6.2% um, and 7.5% had employment at the end of a full year. And so you can see the differences in terms of what focus can do, right? I will note that um, there were outcomes, housing outcomes from uh, the LDF projects as well that weren't contracted, but were um, important. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. So we know it's not just employment. Employment is not just the only solution to homelessness, right? Getting a job doesn't end your homelessness necessarily. In fact, sadly, nationwide, about 40%, up to 44% of the homeless persons who have employment aren't able to escape homelessness, in part because of housing costs, right? Affordable housing is also a key in resolving homelessness. We know that. Um, and so with that high cost of, of housing, employment can't do the job, right? 
but locally it did help to improve the housing status, the housing outcomes for about 60% of the persons served in the LDF projects. So even though it wasn't a primary focus for them, even, it wasn't, even though it wasn't a, a contracted outcome in the original round of, of employment grants, it still um, uh, came to being for 60%. And employ, uh, housing improvements could include moving from the street into something more permanent or from the street into something um, such as a transitional housing or rapid housing program, right? We also know that uh, employment and we research, research, recertified the research that employment has other positive outcomes. We all know that as well. It's important in terms of self-esteem, mental health and physical health. It is one of the common human needs that self-actualization and connection is one of the common human needs we see. And so just to kick us off then, targeted employment projects, you know, definitely have multiple benefits and LDF is helping. And I think that's what we're here today to talk about is what the next round looks like. So thanks, send me questions if you want. We have a full report we can send to you if you'd like but I've taken enough time. So Thank you, Pat. Very much appreciate it. Um, well, let's jump in then. What we'll do is, is we'll go through these one by one and, and have the main point person for each of these programs uh, provide a three or four minute summary of what the program is, what success like, looks like and, and uh, what they're doing to, to help. So, with that, Megan, you are first up from the Salvation Army. Megan Dow, go for it. There I was on mute. So uh, thank you very much uh, for having me and allowing me to share. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, hopefully. Okay, I'm assuming that you are all seeing that. Um, so just to start, I wanted to thank the Lucky Duck Foundation for uh, continuing to support the Salvation Army's uh, partnership with Feeding San Diego for our employment program. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty simple idea, but it is really, we do consider it a win-win-win um, where we're employing folks experiencing homelessness as uh, food rescue drivers. And so we're rescuing food um, from the landfills or from waste um, and then getting, uh, delivering that food out to people who are in need. So um, that's the three-pronged approach to our employment program and in partnership with Feeding San Diego. Um, so really the impetus or the starting is to train folks who are experiencing homelessness as drivers. And um, what we found uh, and how we designed the program is that not everyone is ready uh, or, or really willing to be a driver right off the bat. Um, some need to secure their license or have other challenges or barriers in their background that we can address. So what we have done is employ them as um, uh, pantry workers where they have helped with inventory and um, counting uh, pounds that have been rescued, uh, as well as uh, minor street cleanup and light outreach to our uh, downtown area um, located on 7th Avenue. So um, here you can see two of our, of our employees at hard at work. Um, a part of it, um, in addition to onboarding them as Salvation Army employees um, and, and taking them through the regular employment process and hiring screening process, um, we also help them get food handlers certificates so that they are uh, kind of encouraged to know the ins and outs of um, food safety and um, so that they'll be all ready to go when they um, look for further employment after our part-time employment with us. So the partnership with uh, Feeding San Diego has been um, great and actually um, very successful uh, in terms of route coordination. So um, we are currently, uh, I think, assisting with about 10 routes um, where our drivers 
that are employed uh, go out and rescue food from different retail sites and different organizations. Um, and that is all coordinated through Feeding San Diego. And also we have um, an agreement that allows us the use of a refrigerated van so that we're able to um, safely um, transport the food to lots of different destinations. So the food that we that our drivers are picking up um, are being rescued are uh, being distributed throughout the county. Um, so some of the uh, areas throughout the county are Salvation Army locations in North County and East County, but we are also working with lots of other partner agencies, including um, included but not limited to Voices for Our City Choir, um, and then we're also partnering with Kitchens for Good and um, delivering some of their scratch made meals that are uh, prepared with rescued food um, to other partner agencies such as Elder Help, International Rescue Committee and Community Through Hope. So it's pretty widespread distribution. And our impact to date, um, so of course the biggest impact is that we're employing people experiencing homelessness. And as Pat mentioned, um, you know, while it's great to see that hard um, impact of them increasing their income and them being able to move on to full-time employment um, at, outside of our uh, Salvation Army, it is really great to see people's self-esteem improve and their, their purpose in life improve, um, their, their real um, heart to kind of give back to the community. Um, we've seen that in almost every single person that we've employed. Uh, we have employed uh, 10 people, uh, 10 drivers up to date. Um, six have moved on to full-time employment and permanent housing, and four are still within our programs and working with us currently. Uh, we also are quite proud of the fact that we've uh, rescued over 475,000 pounds of food um, and distributed that out to the community. Was especially helpful during uh, COVID when um, you know, food insecurity kind of was very much a concern and on the rise. So I just, I kind of want to wrap up with just sharing. This is um, one of our drivers, or he, he actually has moved on. Um, he's, he actually was hired as a case manager for us. He, he's working full time with us at the Salvation Army now. But um, uh, his name is Emiliano, and I'm, I'm just going to briefly read his, his, uh, his statement, his story, uh, to let you kind of know about the heart. Um, behind it. So Emiliano says, when I'm working, I see myself. I see where I used to be. I was the person needing food in the pantry line. I was the person sleeping on the street. When I was deep in my addiction and homelessness, I was miserable, hopeless, and had no thought about the future. I was in and out of prison, on the streets, using drugs, and waiting to die in a bush. The Salvation Army and this job has given me a second chance. This has not only been a job that has, I was able to get because of my back, this has been the only job I was able to get because of my background. I also feel part of a team because of the responsibilities that I'm given and the trust that they have had in me. I've had other jobs, but the difference is that this job makes me feel content. Uh, this, is job, this job is service to the community, and now I feel like there are endless possibilities to where my life can go. So with that, I just wanted to say again, thank you to the Lucky Duck Foundation. Um, we are, let me stop sharing, sorry. We are happy to um, I, you know, recruit outside of the Salvation Army um, shelter programs. So if there's any uh, agencies, partner agencies that have people that are needing employment opportunities, um, we, would, uh, we would love to connect with you on that as well. And that's all I have, Drew. Thank you so much. Thank you, Megan. Thanks for sharing Emiliano's story and more about the program. Had the chance to meet Emiliano and awesome, awesome man and and a great story. And I should say that's one thing that we we know, but also hope and want to see more of that come out of this effort is more and more of those individual success stories and testimonials that we can uh, share widely to, to educate folks, inform folks, inspire others to, to give and get behind this whole uh, collaborative effort and approach. So 
Thank you, Megan. Very much look forward to expanding this uh, great program that's already rescued almost uh, 500,000 pounds of, of food, which is awesome. All right, next up, San Diego College of Continuing Education. And I think we have Samantha Stanley with us. Uh, Samantha, are you with us today? Yep. Hi. Um, Maureen was planning on presenting, but she unfortunately could not be here today. Um, so I'll just give a quick synopsis of our program. Again, my name is Samantha Stanley, and I'm the Pathways Program Coordinator under the San Diego College of Continuing Education Foundation and Dr. Kosky, and under the Dean of Student Equity, Maureen Rubicalva. Um, the Pathways Program is a direct student support program serving students experiencing homelessness at the San Diego College of Continuing Education. SDCCE is the non-credit side of the uh, San Diego Community College District. Um, SDCCE offers a big variety of completely free certificate programs ranging from a large variety of fields such as healthcare, HVAC, welding, automotive, IT, business management, ESL, GED programs, and many, many more. The Pathways Program provides case management services and financial direct supports to students at SDCCE. We have the ability to provide case management to 45 students, and we can accept an additional 100 students as affiliates. The only difference between the affiliates and the case managed students is the affiliates do not receive the ongoing case management, but they are still supplied with some direct support cares, including access to technology and internet. The direct supports that we have, that we provide to our students act as a barrier um, act as removing barriers to the students completing their certificate program of their choosing. Some direct supports that we have provided just this semester are things like paying legal fees, car repairs, especially for uh, students who are living in their cars. That's super vital. Um, hotel stays, housing needs, uh, clothing, including interview attire, and of course, for uh, payment for um, uh, necessary items for a student's class, including CNA certification and uh, like welding equipment and things like that. Every student is supplied with a laptop and a hotspot of which they can keep after the completion of their course. Students can act up, uh, access up to $600 in support. Most of my current students have accessed a large portion of that, as well as the recent CARES, uh, CARES Act grant, which supplied them with an additional $1,500. Uh, the Pathways program also can provide students with paid internships after completing just one required CE course or college and career readiness course. Our spring semester is beginning February 3rd, and many of our certificate programs are open for enrollment. One program that is usually quite difficult to get into is changing the enrollment for open enrollment just this upcoming semester. That program is our healthcare um, CNA program. And that usually requires an ad code after completing an orientation to enroll, uh, but they have done away with that this semester. So it's a really great job training program. So if you have anyone interested uh, in the CNA course, please encourage them to enroll. Or you can reach out to me or uh, Dean Marine and we can get them enrolled. Um, I'll be putting my email in the chat and I'll make myself available to anyone who'd like to hear more about the Pathways program. Um, and again, if you have anyone interested in the program, please pass my email along to them. Thank you. And thank you, Drew, very much. Thanks, Samantha. And, and just so everybody's clear, there's transportation included uh, with this program, paid internships, case management if it's needed, access to like 75 different certificate and training programs, mm -hmm. access to uh, free community college through the Promise program, and then through there, a bunch of different um, apprenticeship programs. Exactly. It's, it's very comprehensive and, and a whole heck of a lot of opportunities in it. And it also, um, you know, serves or caters to any state of homelessness straight from the streets. Right. And, and it's self housing and shelter. It's self attested. They don't need to have an affidavit, affidavit of homelessness. So if they're couch surfing, they can come to us and access all the amazing services. All right, thank you, Samantha. Uh, next up, Mary Leiden with uh, Homemade. Hello, thank you. Let me share my screen here.
Thanks, Drew. And we're excited to be here. I'm Mary Leiden, uh, Executive Director for HomeAid San Diego. HomeAid has been in San Diego serving uh, for 20 years. Um, our mission is to help people experiencing or at risk of homelessness um, to build new lives. And our model is to partner with social um, service agencies. And we have three areas of focus, our builds program, our cares program, and our new works program, uh, which uh, is being funded uh, in part by Lucky Duck Foundation. We're very grateful. Um, our builds program, just a little tiny background about us. Um, we have built or renovated uh, 29 shelters for 14 um, homeless social service agencies. Um, we've created over 700 beds and um, provided $6.5 million in construction savings on $35 million uh, worth of, uh, of project value. Our CARES program uh, is a, an opportunity for corporations to um, give back through creating care kits or um, light rehab projects to our service provider. And then our new works program, which um, I'll share a little bit about now. Um, as we've heard, we know that people experiencing homelessness, they want to work, but they need training. They need the right environment and structure to succeed. And we've taken that all into consideration when creating our new program. We provide the opportunity to develop skills in the construction industry. We have um, a long track, track record of partnerships in the construction arena, education, and with employment partners. We've also developed our own um, homemade uh, works curriculum. Um, it's a part online program developed by uh, 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 an online uh, university program um, that was um, paid for by Lennar Home Builders. Um, and this is going to provide um, a pool to uh, the building industry here in San Diego who are desperate for uh, a new workforce. So it's a win-win um, situation. Um, again, our program is a little bit online, um, in person, and then in the field. Um, you'll see a listing of topics for our constru the construction aspect of the program. We also have a strong uh, job uh, placement component. Uh, we'll get them ready um, to, to apply and to interview um, and then to help them along the way with that. Bank of America uh, provides a financial readiness program that will be a part of, of this program as well. So we have uh, two components to our, our program. The one is this construction education. In addition to the construction um, uh, curriculum, we provide a, a living wage um, stipend um, as they complete the program week to week, it's a, a three week program. Um, it's taught by volunteers from the construction uh, industry. Uh, we provide laptops for the students to use um, during the program. We'll have uh, inspiring um, construction industry workers speak um, at, during the program, um, those who have come, overcome adversary, um, not unlike um, the students um, who will be in the program. And upon completing the program, they'll receive a certificate and a basic construction uh, tool belt. The other component um, of our program is uh, support for success. And we have worked on this in partnership with our service providers. Uh, Promises to Kids was key in helping us develop it, to develop this. Um, it's really, uh, you know, the, the, a continuum of support along the, the entire program and on into when they're employed. employed. Um, we'll provide uh, mentors from the construction industry right off the bat um, during the, the classroom component. Uh, uh, students may have barriers um, like not having access to transportation or Wi-Fi, quiet study room, and sometimes tutoring they might need. We're going to provide all of that to help them be as successful as possible. Again, we'll also be helping them with the application uh, process um, and interview training. Uh, we have our own um, um, job bank um, that we are we're, we're already filling it filling it up now. 
Um, and these are local builders and subcontractors that will offer jobs um, specific to this program. Uh, they will sign an MOU that states that they will work with anyone that they hire um, to give them the extra support that they need to integrate into the workforce. Um, and so this is a comp key component to the program. And then we'll, we'll also be uh, measuring uh, and tracking our, our long-term success and the long-term success of those students. Uh, we're excited to kick off our first uh, cohort the beginning of March. Um, we've gotten um, support um, from the private sector and the industry, as well as um, uh, organizations like Lucky Ducks. Um, we are excited to get this rolling. We have a long-term uh, sustainability uh, plan in place, and we hope, uh, as well as uh, with all of you, to really uh, make a, 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 a solutions-oriented difference um, in hi hiring people who are formerly homeless or at risk. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Mary. Look forward to working with you on this uh, fairly new program. Thank you. Uh, all right, next, Stephen Jalay, I think I'm saying that correctly, from San Diego Youth Services, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry about that, a little bit of trouble on muting it. Yes, I'm Stephen Jalay. I'm the Associate Executive Director for San Diego Youth Services. Um, thank you so much, Drew and, and Will, of course, for supporting us as well as the Lucky Duck Foundation. And it's so awesome to see everyone on this call, all of our close partners in the community, and so many good programs, so many good services. So it's just always a pleasure to be here together, uh, working to collaborate to end homelessness for um, our, our folks here in San Diego. And specifically for our mission, San Diego Youth Services is focused on supporting young people uh, to empower them to reach their highest potentials. And our, our, our mission is directly aligned to end homelessness for young people in San Diego, and if not across the country, if we can do it. Um, so again, our program is uh, fairly simple. It's, a, it's, it's in this idea of speed to market idea. Um, so for um, a while, San Diego Services really was in the business of, of shelters and housing um, and then provided support services. So over the last 50 plus years, uh, we've supported over 750,000 young people specifically that have experienced exploitation, runaway or experienced in homelessness or otherwise vulnerable. We now serve anywhere between 20 and 30,000 young people a year um, and uh, we're in almost every corner of this county um, providing some sort of support, but more importantly, in partnership with all, all of you and other organizations who are doing critical key work around. And so I see some of my partners here today and I'm super excited to always work with you wherever we can. Um, our services for San Diego services generally include, we blend, braid, and weave as many services and supports around our young people as possible. I've heard the presenters and the other programs um, and many of you I know very uh, um, closely, you, you do the same thing. We provide everything we possibly can to uh, our clients, in this case, our young people, um, to, uh, again, support them on their pathway of their choosing. Um, so much uh, such that we, we are aware that our young people have a lot of in, uh, economic inequity against them, and that's what leads to their exploitation and their, their cycles of homelessness. And so anything we can blend or braid around uh, behavioral health, suicide prevention, LGBTQ support services, uh, um, oftentimes foster care or justice involved, um, we're gonna wrap those types of services uh, around with our young people. Well, this specific project that Lucky Duck is supporting um, is very special to us and we also think for our continuum uh, as well. We have a number of housing um, complexes across San Diego, and we work really closely with other partners as well as our outreach to get young people off the street, out of those vulnerable situations and into those living situations, uh, safe living situations. Well, so much of our focus is always about getting them out of danger and, and, and getting their basic needs. Uh, we often have delay 
or previously had delay in getting the three E's or education, employment, um, or entrepreneurship activities going for the young people, which as you all know, we, the clock starts ticking in terms of the time we have with them day one. So we wanted to break down the amount of time it takes to get the young people engaged in the three E's. So what we did is we converted uh, a spot on our Point Loma campus into a coffee shop, the Grounds Up Coffee Shop. Literally, it's co-located um, right with 32 units. So it helps break down the barriers of childcare, transportation, and just the, the dynamics of the trauma of the young people, what they experience coming off the street. So getting them regulated to sleep at night and be awake during the day, um, have a little bit of confidence to go right down the stairs, get some barista training, and then leave the day with money in their pocket. And the faster that we can do that, uh, we found that really, really helps those critical early days in supporting our young people on their trajectories. So as I mentioned, this particular Grounds Up coffee shop is, is one of two that we have in our agency uh, operating, and it's in our Point Loma area. Uh, it's co-located with 32 other units for young people. These are transitional housing, um, as well as other support housing units. Um, the young people are between 18 and 24. Many of them are pregnant or parenting. Um, and, and again, we have a, a full um, coffee shop set up, a place where young people can go and actually um, who aren't working in the shop to come and sit and get the Wi-Fi and, and just have a safe place to be. Um, and uh, what we also like is uh, it gives the customer, um, which is mostly our personnel, our staff, our partners who are coming for meetings or otherwise, an opportunity to interface with the young people, which gives a nice learning environment for the young people to learn those, those uh, soft and hard um, uh, workforce skills. Um, we are, uh, our goals are get youth trained in basic vocation skills, professionalism, uh, give them understanding of workers' rights and benefits, how to advocate for themselves, um, in, in, in ways that will work and get them uh, what they need on their career growth. And also not only just get them the job um, skills, but we also wanna plant the seed for entrepreneurship. Most of the businesses here in San Diego really are private businesses or small businesses. So our idea here is as there's a possibility of young people learning all sides of this particular trade and then being able to be supported and expanded the community, maybe even start their own businesses. So we even start those conversations as early as we possibly can with this program. Um, the, the hours are, are subsidized. This program is not about, quote unquote, making money. It's a training program. Therefore, again, we're, we're not worried about profit per se. We're worried about the economic profit, which is about the, or the, the social profit, excuse me, which is having the young people come out, be ready, be connected to the, their, their next phase of their economic opportunities. So thank you very much for your time. It's an absolute pleasure to be working with you. And I can't wait to have you all here at our site for a meeting. And we'll get you some of this uh, great coffee from our young people. And we'll help uh, support these young people on their pathway. Thank you for your time. Great. Thank you, Stephen. Um, National Conflict Resolution. And David J., also a, a new partner here that, that we think can play a really constructive role. So David, thanks for being here. And it's all Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And I have my colleague, uh, Holly, here as well. And we'll tag team this a little bit and try and um, keep our four minutes here. Uh, we really do appreciate like uh, taking a chance on, on bringing us. I know uh, we've worked with many of the partners on, on my screen here in different settings, but um, this, this particular work is new for us. And, and so we're very excited about that. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, National Conflict Resolution Center, uh, ultimately, we are about equipping people with the, with the tools and skills and expertise to help individuals and organizations manage and solve conflicts and to do it well and with civility. Um, and we, um, we, we have worked with, with various homeless populations over the years, but um, in the last couple of years, have had a real chance to work uh, really one-on-one -on -one with folks in, in conflict coaching. Um, I know actually uh, we, we work with some of you in that work as well, um, and uh, look forward to exploring that partnership with some of the folks on the screen as well. Uh, but what we've been reminded of over and over again, and what's, what's really, um, informed the way we came into this project is that it's those core skills of problem solving of accepting and hearing 
criticism, being adaptable, that are the core for all of us um, in uh, both obtaining and retaining work. And so uh, we, we have taken uh, curriculum that we've delivered in all sorts of settings over years uh, in work readiness skills and, uh, and the life skills that we all rely on as, as a way of equipping people to be more successful, in, especially in retaining jobs as they transition into them. Um, and we, we know um, that, that being able to keep people connected as individuals is really a driver for their success as they as they take those first steps in, in entering or re-entering the the workplace, and so um, that that was what brought us to to the conversation with Lucky Duck. Um, I want to hand it over for just a minute here to Holly to talk through a little bit of our curriculum and then um, the ways we see possibilities to uh, partner with you all when she's done. Thank you, David. Uh, as David mentioned, my name is Holly Sullivan. I am the senior project manager here at National Conflict Resolution Center, and I would love to partner with all of you. So I'm writing down your email addresses and I will be following up after this. Um, we have an 11 part series um, for our work readiness exchange training program. So this is something that we've really created from the ground up and have the ability to customize potentially for each one of your different organizations and communities that you work with. Um, so I wanted to thank Pat earlier for her report as well as her reference and comment uh, in regards to employment's positive impact on self-esteem. Uh, that's really part of what underlies our curriculum here. So our work readiness exchange program if you're interested in working with us is a life skills and soft skills oriented work readiness training. So whereas other uh, workshops might help with material things like resume building, um, ours is really going to focus on communication skills, conflict resolution in the workplace, getting the person themselves ready for that environment, right? So we're gonna have uh, eight essential life skills, which include problem solving, teamwork, uh, how to take and give constructive feedback, self-confidence, et cetera. Uh, it's really about, you know, how do you communicate in an interview on the job? How do you manage your stress? Uh, how do you manage long-term resilience? Uh, there may be you know, other opportunities for people to interact. We're currently hosting this uh, virtually as well as in person, depending on the COVID uh, situation. So regardless of the venue, we do believe in hands-on, highly interactive sessions with discussion, exercises, videos, as well as role plays. Um, and you're really engaged the whole time. Participants are going to build off of the strengths that they currently have. They're going to gain more insight into their own behaviors, and then they're going to be able to have empathy for others as they participate throughout our program. Uh, this is really a cognitive behavioral communication training that should leave participants feeling valued, respected, and understood while teaching them some healthy communication skills along the way. So I'll pass it back to David. So uh, just mindful of our time here, I just I, I really want to emphasize, you know, we, we see this as at the end of the day, helping our our individuals that, that we're working with that you all are working with in um, being able to to interact with others more effectively to empower them and to be able not just to secure but but keep a job. Um, and so we're looking forward to the ongoing work uh, with with everybody on this screen. Um, and uh, finding new ways to, to work with some of you who we've been with for a long time here. So it's great to see you all, thanks. Great, thanks, David, thanks, Holly. Uh, I wanna pause quickly, I had a question that, in the chat that um, I thought was a good one, basically how uh, we the organizations and programs were selected through the, the, the competitive application process and, and what worked last time, the first iteration and, and what didn't. And, we looked at a whole bunch of different factors, but basically we tried to understand you know, how many participants could a program benefit, uh, how many of those participants was it estimated would be able to go on and, and secure long-term and full-time employment. And when we looked at the budgets, we wanted to, our preference is the lion's share of Lucky Duck funding goes to cover 
uh, wages for folks so that the, the funding is going directly in their pockets to support their efforts to climb out of uh, homelessness. Um, so I'm happy to go into more detail, you know, offline or if time allows uh, later, but that, that was generally speaking how we came about this was, you know, let's find programs that uh, that makes sense from a, a dollars and cents standpoint that can really benefit a good number of people and put the wages directly in their pockets. And with the first iteration, that's what proved to be the programs that went well, that they benefited a good number of people. They got relevant work experience. And, and I think there's four or five that are presenting today that got funding in the first go around because they were, they had good outcomes um, they, they benefited a lot of people. And, you know, the first one that comes to mind is the first present presentation, which was feeding San Diego. And, and you heard Megan say that everybody is, that's gone through that program is, has secured full-time employment and is, is housed. And, and we know that's not gonna, it's not gonna always be a hundred percent success rate with these programs, but that's a really strong outcome. And on, in addition to all the food that's being rescued. So hopefully that helps. And again, if you have further questions, I'm happy to chat more offline. So next up, we've got Teresa Smith from Dreams for Change. Teresa? Actually, Teresa is not able to join us today. My okay. apologies. This is Kyra Bethel. I'm the director hey, of programs. Hey, Drew. And uh, hi there, National Conflict Resolution Center. We actually work with them. Uh, so great to be here this morning. Um, of course, wanted to start out by thanking Lucky Duck Foundation for their support of our program, our social enterprise. And without further ado, I will explain who we are and what we do. Uh, so we operate a workforce development uh, social enterprise called Dreams Cuisine. Uh, and what we do is we have three food trucks that we use to provide immediate uh, part-time job training to our participants, coupled with uh, weekly personal development training. So the program is really near and dear to my heart because I managed it for the first six years of my time with Dreams for Change. And during those first years, I was a one person show. Um, and now we have uh, grown into a fully staffed program with not only a program manager, but two case managers, a financial literacy coach, and an employment specialist, all of whom work one-on-one -on -one with our clients. And I'll circle back to that in a moment, but first let's start out with who we serve. So we offer immediate paid job training and personal development to people who are striving to overcome some of the highest barriers to employment, homelessness, domestic violence, mental health struggles, involvement with the justice system. Um, we also are focusing on helping people do their work from the inside out. So it starts with a person just learning about the program, attending an or orientation that we hold every Wednesday at 8 a.m., which is a paid orientation. Um, participants are, are earning $14 an hour when they work on our food trucks. And the goal of working on the food trucks is to really just give that real world and real life experience to help build soft skills like conflict management and teamwork, customer service, punctuality, right? And then the other component that is truly um, foundational to, I think, the success that we see that people have when they do exit the program to either mainstream employment or more specialized training of their choice. Um, and that, that's the personal development workshops. And we partner with expert organizations in five different areas. So we spend several weeks on mental health awareness. We cover emotional literacy, financial literacy, conflict management with NCRC, and resume and interview coaching. And like I said, for each of those, we have an expert organization that manages or facilitates those, those workshops. So mental health awareness is taught by Mental Health America. Emotional literacy is taught by a wonderful uh, nonprofit called Project Aware. Uh, our financial literacy is taught by our in-house financial coach. And as I mentioned, National Conflict Resolution Center teaches our conflict management series. And then we have an in-house employment specialist who teaches resume and interview coaching. So again, the goal of our program is to immediately connect people to a stream of income, right? No barriers. There's no interview process. You show up to the orientation for two hours. You learn what you need to learn about food handling. 
Um, and then we get you on the truck the following week for your first full shift. Uh, the only thing that a person has to do to continue working every week is attend their workshop, right? That those five different areas that I just spoke of. Uh, and those workshops are just held every Thursday and they last anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. Um, again, our goal is to, at the end of hopefully a 12-week period, uh, to connect people to mainstream employment or specialized training. Um, we like to, uh, you know, identify ourselves as a feeder program to programs like Kitchens for Good, which may have an, act, uh, you know, an application process and, and certain types of qualifications that people just need some help getting there to even meet those qualifications. So, um, it's a really uh, effective program. Uh, prior to the pandemic, we were serving about 60 to 75 people a year. Um, we were on, you know, set to in 2020, um, up that to over 100 people. Uh, and then the world started to shut down. And so uh, we are now working to get back to that pre pandemic level, at least. Um, and, and going pretty strong, we we are only able to have one of our trucks in operation. Uh, so what we've done, um, and I'm really excited about this. We're able to have participants also work with our tax program. So we, we do the VITA tax program, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, which provides free tax preparation for families and individuals who are earning 57,000 or less per year. Um, so we have workforce participants who actually are in our tax sites right now who help with greeting and intake. Um, we're also working with um, or, or having our participants work with our food distribution efforts every week. So we're finding different ways uh, within the pandemic to make sure that we keep people engaged, keep them working on those soft skills, um, and of course, attending those classes every week to get to that outcome. Um, my colleague, Kelly Spoon, is here as well. So I do want to hand it over to her if we have a little bit more time in case she wants to say anything. Um, well, first, thank you again. Thanks to Drew. Thanks to Lucky Duck. Thanks to many of the people I've worked with that are um, also on this call. Um, I wanted to point out one, Teresa's, or Teresa and Kyra have really built a fabulous project. Um, that social enterprise model is something that um, a lot of our organizations around town aren't doing, where our food trucks, we would like all three of them up and moving. So if you have a need, we'll partner with you. We'll come out to, um, we'll come out to housing developments. We'll come out to those kinds of places and create a bigger partnership while we're also training and providing a very low cost meal. Um, we, um, I think right now we are going through our application process back for CalFresh, but we've always maintained CalFresh and all of our um, costs are very, very, very low. I think I get my hot links for about $4 <laughs> and it's the same one I can get at the football stadium up in LA. So um, it, it's important um, to get that food out. So a lot of our um, clients um, are also coming right off the street. I mean, you can go visit our food truck right there at 17th and Imperial. Um, the other partnerships that we work with is that I've partnered um, with Ace Parking uh, or Laws Parking, excuse me. I've partnered with a lot of the other places and we've moved people up into not just a pizza shop to cook, we've moved them into other types of um, employment that actually can move them forward and have a management level. Um, we have one young lady who um, got a job with um, Laws last month and she's already, um, she's been noticed by the national director of um, equity and they're moving her up and they're doing more and more things. So um, I, those are the partnerships we would like also. So, but Kyra does a great job. Thanks, Kelly. You're welcome. <laughs> Kelly, Kyra, you guys good? I think we are. Uh, just All want right. to put it out there. If anyone has any employers who want to connect with us, we absolutely are looking for those types of partnerships to connect our participants to once they've completed the program. Good deal. All right. Thank you both. Laura with Homestart, you're up. Thank you, Drew, and thanks to everybody at, at Lucky Duck for having us today. Peter, Dan, everybody, we're just really thrilled to have this partnership with all of you. So this is a special year for Homestart. This is our 50th year. So Homestart began really as a project to prevent child abuse and neglect. And so we do that by strengthening families and local communities. Uh, that is one of our graduates of the program and her beautiful child who is now working in a law office after starting in our thrift boutique. Okay, a little bit more about what we're doing. So I started a housing program a little over 12 years ago 
focused on young women who are pregnant or parenting transition age facing homelessness. And we grew our program over time. And at about seven years ago, we realized that the young women living in our programs really needed a safe place to develop their confidence and their capacity for employment. So we opened the doors to our thrift boutique, which is in Normal Heights community. And we offer really high quality items because it's a, it's a converted home. So it doesn't have a large space, but it really does feel like a boutique there. So we knew that we needed to find a place where young women who are moms or about to become mothers could have a trauma-informed place where they could learn, as others have talked about, both hard and soft skills. And it really has a double bottom line for us, social enterprise. So it's a business um, and all the money that we make in the business goes back into hiring more of the young women that are living in our housing programs. And the social enterprise is really recognizing that these are young women who have multiple barriers. Many of them uh, didn't have much of an employment history. Uh, most all of them have had some sort of trauma in their lives. And so they needed a place that understood uh, what they were going through and that could help them become the self-sufficient young women we knew that they could be. Next, I was part of the Red F uh, Corporation who brought social enterprise programs together and gave us some additional training around how do we build our programs? How do we make them better enterprises? And I became familiar with several other programs around the country that started adding candle making. So we saw candle making as an opportunity for some of the young women that didn't have as much time. Maybe they were juggling school, parenting, and many other um, efforts on their plan. So the candle making process enabled us to do shorter work hours, much more flexible schedule. It was a great opportunity for young women who really wanted to learn something that would give them some artistic capacity, as well as understanding how to start a small business. So uh, I burn a, a Bright Futures candle every morning when I'm drinking my coffee. We have great scents. Uh, we've partnered with some other nonprofits in the community, and we sell them at the Social Enterprise Thrift Boutique, as well as online and uh, many other places as well. So if, if you'd like a special candle for your event, please reach out to us. We can make a custom design for you. So these are our two social enterprises. So we know with different um, young people, they have different interests and different desires of what they want from employment. So some have really focused on the customer aspect. How do I build my customer skills? Some are really interested in displays and learning more about fashion or retail or design. And then others, you know, really understand like, I want to eventually start my own small business. So what is the right combination of skills and experiences? So some of the young women work just in the thrift boutique, some just with Bright Futures, and some are able to, to do both because they want that experience with both of those programs. And so uh, again, as others have said, the self-esteem is key. Um, when they're overcoming multiple barriers, um, this is what this program does for them. They build their confidence, their self-esteem in a setting that feels supportive and understands some of the trauma that they have experienced. So um, happy, happy to see that we continue to grow and we have um, more and more partners that are stepping forward and interested in, in the work we're doing with these young moms. This is what success looks like. On the left, you see Stacy and her son, AJ. So Stacy entered our program um, right before she gave birth to AJ. She um, was in and out of homelessness most of her life. We uh, finally convinced her to come and work in the boutique, but she only wanted to stay in the back room, sorting clothing. She did not feel comfortable being around any customers uh, at all. Over time, we worked closely with her to coax her into working in the front of the store, training her on customer service, really helping her build her belief in herself. Well, Stacy was then promoted. She was our lead associate was on television with me a few times, uh, getting up way early in the morning, speaking on uh, TV, and really just grew a tremendous amount. So about a year ago, um, she moved on and she has a full-time position with benefits, working in a, um, a local store in La Mesa and has uh, a plan. So her independent living plan 
has her moving out into her own apartment within the next year. Uh, one face of many faces that really have grown and thrived because of these social enterprise programs. So again, thank you to Lucky Duck and partnering with us and um, everybody associated with it. We're pleased to be here and see many of our friends and partners on the screen as well. Thank you so much, Drew. Great, thank you, Laura. Mm -hmm. Eric, Urban Street Angels. Awesome. Thank you so much, Drew and Will, Peter, Dan, the whole Lucky Duck team. It, and for Pat's presentation too, Pat, let me just say thank you. That, that was so powerful to see. Uh, and we can't thank Lucky Duck enough for what you do for our organizations. When you talk about removing barriers from uh, for our youth, in our case, or removing barriers for uh, individuals experiencing homelessness, it's great to work with people that can help remove barriers for us as we serve them. So thank you so very much for, for who you are. Um, you know, as Stephen said and Laura said, as we we partnering in a facility in La Mesa with our youth, our focus is uh, transitional age youth and getting them off the street permanently. And in San Diego, as we as we all know, homelessness is our issue. If we can catch these individuals at the right age of change, being able to change that trajectory. And what we always say is while the cement is still wet, well, at 18 to 24, the cement's still wet. And if we can, if we can catch them, get them off the street and Urban Street Angels is partnering with UPAC in this particular collaborative. And uh, as we focus on housing and getting them off the street and as UPAC has come along side of us and focused on an apprenticeship program, a job training program to where we will pay our youth day one and training them and things in their cafe and their print shop and in all those things that Dante is going to tell you about here in just a second. But we're finding it so important to not just help the youth get a job because a job is what you're paid for, but a calling is what you're made for. So if we can, we can help someone find their passion and what it is they want to do and what it is that they can do that they've been told all their life, these young people that you can't, or you're a loser, or you'll never amount to anything. Well, we're giving them that hope that they can. And so being able to tackle these these issues for our young people and get them into a sustainable place to where they can have their own place. They've got jobs, but they're doing those things that they want to do and they've, they're able to do. And in this particular uh, collaborative in this program that Lucky Duck is allowing us to do is uh, doing things like paying our youth day one, $15 an hour. It's an eight week cohort. We'll take between 10 and 15 youth every eight weeks and we'll put them through a cohort of training uh, and job skills, and then we'll have a full-time job case manager that will do nothing but get them into jobs of their passion or their calling after to stay employed and working with them. But also with this, where as Stephen mentioned, you know, it's so important for our youth to get dollars in their pockets like immediately. We're going to have matching funds in this program. So if a youth goes through eight weeks and they make two hundred and fifty dollars, we're going to match their account with two hundred and fifty dollars upon completion. So they're coming off with even though it's eight weeks, it's really short. They're really coming away with cash in their pocket, and of course having a job. And so we're super excited about that. Dante, do you mind telling us a little bit more in depth about how the program looks? Yeah, well, thank you so much, Eric. I, actually, first, can everybody hear me okay? Because I've been having some computer issues. Here. Okay, thank you. I apologize. Otherwise, you'll just see me blurred and not even be able to hear. But anyway, I'm, I'm just really grateful, uh, Eric, um, to Lucky Duck and also you, Eric, at Urban Street Angels. Um, you guys all do such impactful things, and it's really an honor to be here. And this whole room, I'm familiar with a lot of people in this room, and you guys make some pretty incredible things happen. So it's actually humbling to be here with you guys. Um, but I'll I'll jump right into it because I know uh, uh, you know time is uh, ticking a little bit. But uh, honestly, we're like Eric said, we're going to provide a fast, fun, and impactful paid apprenticeship to uh, uh, 50 youth uh, over the co course of several cohorts. The focus will be a combination of culinary, graphic design, print, and entrepreneurship. And this will take place at our neighborhood enterprise center. So I'll briefly, uh, I'll do the 15 second version of our enterprise center. So it's in City Heights. 
you guys all work with youth. One of the biggest barriers was nobody was hiring our youth. We work with a lot of justice involved youth. We work with high risk youth. We work with refugee youth. Like you, know, I hate using the labels, but this is just the description of, 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 you know, kind of the issues. And despite the kids making genuine efforts to get jobs and us actually, you know, uh, helping them get through that, they still weren't even getting an interview. So while we fight those battles on other ends, the other thing is, well, let's stop complaining about it and let's try to do something about it also. So about four and a half years ago during youth group, which was six of my probation youth and six refugee youth, I said, you know what, you guys, this, this is crazy. Let's just open up our own place. What do you guys think? And uh, first it was like fun talking about it, but then it's just like, no, let's actually do it. So fast forward four and a half years later, we have a very vibrant center in City Heights. Um, we have a cafe, culinary, um, catering company, print shop um, in City Heights, and we focus on the diversity of City Heights. So that's our other battle. A lot of people associate a lot of negative uh, things with City Heights. And again, it's very frustrating. It's painful. It's, 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 it, it angers us. But again, instead of just let the frustration get the best of us, what can we do to battle that? So we focus on the diversity, the real, the real strength of City Heights, right? It's family values, it's resiliency. So our menu is totally reflects the City Heights community. We have Somali food, Ethiopian, Vietnamese, Cambodian, Mexican, Syrian. And it's not Food Network TV. This is, uh, we learn directly from our community. And that's the only way you could truly honor it, the flavor profiles in, in the cultures that, that are in our city. So, and that's, that's the history of why we opened this place. Uh, and I'll talk about the training program that we're so proud to, to offer. Uh, so first month, it's all culinary. Um, we have probably one of the best chefs in San Diego. And I only say that because not only does he have the chops to do what he does, but he has the passion. Um, and, and you guys know that you, you need both sides. You could have the technical expertise, but if you don't know how to make that relatable to the kids, it, it makes it very uh, challenging. Uh, they're obviously gonna learn how to work in a commercial setting because um, that's what we we are. Um, and the other good is things are going to get a balance of good high end, high volume catering. Uh, so that means different like high end dishes. But then again, the bonus is the the cultural aspect. Um, you know, a lot of kids they even we we hear about you know oh we should be more culturally aware or we should create appreciate diversity, which I agree with. Sometimes we don't know how to do it, especially the youth. But to have all the kids right there at our table learning how to make uh, sukuma, which is a Ugandan dish, or kana, which is a Karin dish, or uh, sorai omarak, which is one of our Somali dishes. It's, it's pretty impactful for them to actually learn directly these dishes and flavor profiles. Um, they're gonna get their um, food uh, handler cards as well with us. And um, again, it, it's led by a chef and myself that, that, that really bring it, we really wanna make, the, uh, make it worth the, the kids while. The second month, we're gonna focus just on graphic design, print and entrepreneurship. So the graphic design, I don't wanna to get too into it, but really it's all these kids have great ideas in their head, uh, whether it's a logo, an image, but how do they convert that into something that they could put on a product, right? Like a t-shirt or an emblem or a logo. Um, so our graphic designer, uh, and fortunately, I'll throw in another name in there. We were able to uh, join a writer's block. I don't know if you're familiar with writer's block. They are now part of us at the Enterprise Center. So all of our graphics design department is now run by Writer's Block, which is a UPAC program now. And we're just so excited because when I opened the print shop, I actually aspired to be like Writer's Block and, and here they are with us. So it's actually, it couldn't have worked out any better for us. Um, and then on the print side, so they have these great logos. We're gonna teach them uh, how to develop that. And now you could convert that to shirts, hats, mugs, masks, uh, keychains, uh, banners, stickers, a little bit of everything. Uh, and it's pretty empowering because a lot of these youth, they've seen how this works or, or, or they see the, the end result, but they don't realize how, how, how easy it is for them to get into that. Uh, and then that ties us into the entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship is very basic. Uh, a lot of kids, they would like to open up their own business. They say, hey, I'm interested in opening up their own business. But when you ask them, well, do you know what steps? It's almost always no, uh, because it gets very intimidating, whether it's business formation or how taxation works. Um, but we're going to help walk them through that, demystify, debunk some of the barriers that they put in front of themselves and really just uh, motivate them as well. I mean, some of the stuff in the print shop, they could open up their own print shop uh, on less than about a $600 investment. We're going to teach them how to do that. Whether they do it, that's a different story. You know, you guys work with youth. I mean, you could teach them a lot of stuff, but, um, you know, it depends on how they actually uh, convert that. 
Um, lastly, because I know I, I think I've I, I've gone overboard, but um, you know we're just motivated to do this. Uh, th that goes a long way. You guys know this. We could teach them, but if you don't have staff that really care and are genuine about helping them, all of our staff they have very relatable bears that they overcame. Uh, uh, to, to work with these kids. And, and that, I, I guess I'll end on that last point. I mean, over the two months, we're not going to, they're not going to become Gordon Ramsay in that two months. They're not going to launch the next Nike product during that two months. They're not going to be the next shark for Shark Tank that two months. But what happens after that two months? You know, what did we do? What do we motivate them? What do we inspire them? And uh, there's no reason why they can't become those things. Um, so I'm so grateful to partner up with Eric. Uh, just his, his energy is very inspiring. That's how we try to bring it over on our end too. I mean, we're not perfect, but we definitely uh, we definitely will bring it. And uh, I'm still glad to be with you guys and learn all the different programs out there um, and making a difference. So thank you for your time, everybody. I look forward to working with you all in these U. Thanks, Dante. Thanks, Eric. All right, we've got two left. We're about 10, 15 minutes behind. So I'm gonna, I don't wanna cheat anybody, but I am gonna ask these last two to, to try to be extra quick with uh, their summation of their program. So next up is Marissa Veron from uh, McAllister. Go for it, Marissa. Wonderful. Can you all see my screen and hear me yeah. all right? Fabulous. My name is Marissa Veron and I am the executive director of McAllister Institute. And I am so excited to share a little bit more about our project that we call Work for Hope. And obviously we are in wonderful company with many of our partners that make this possible and so many programs that are inspiring even our next generation of growth. Uh, Work for Hope, well actually, to give you a quick little grounding in McAllister Institute, we uh, have a 45 year history here in San Diego and we are one of the largest providers of substance use disorder services. So we are not by nature an employment agency, uh, but we have always been um, an organization that grows where the need is. And as we have been experiencing um, our clients having increasingly complex barriers uh, of experiencing homelessness, this has really been a natural offshoot to support individuals who often are not ready for treatment yet. So uh, Work for Hope is really a mosaic of support. Of course, we are so grateful for the Lucky Duck support, which has been um, in existence since 2020 and was really uh, at the inception of this project that allowed us to get it up and running. Uh, but it has since grown. So uh, we start off with a partnership uh, with the city of Chula Vista to do actual community-based uh, outreach to identify individuals who are experiencing homelessness, uh, to start to assess their needs and see what they might uh, be interested in and how we can engage them. And a dignified work opportunity was one of the um, areas that we really found that even if people weren't ready for treatment or for housing, that that was really something that they uh, were ready to get started on. And so uh, as they are identified, we connect them to our South Bay Enhanced Services Center, which is a county funded program and it really focuses on being low barrier and providing support. So everything from storage to showers, uh, we have a great partnership with Feeding America to provide food uh, and really an introduction to some of the uh, gifts that may come with being enrolled in a larger program. Uh, one of those being Work for Hope. And so Work for Hope uh, is again a partnership, not just with Lucky Duck, but also with the city of Chula Vista. And we really focus on community beautification projects. So uh, their public works department and their park rangers identified that there were just so many shared common spaces in the city of Chula Vista that had been um, neglected, overcome with graffiti, trash, weeds, and so, uh, we are able to help increase their capacity to address those projects by providing on-site uh, training as well as work stipend for doing that. And so uh, I think pictures say a thousand words. So uh, this is one of the really great projects that they have done to remove the graffiti and to really change just the overall aesthetic of a space that is used um, by the entire community. So this is a bathroom that they repainted and see it's a full work crew. Uh, they've also expanded for not being hot. 
et cetera. And uh, also going into weed abatement, can you hear me all okay? Okay, great. Uh, going into weed abatement, graffiti removal, and it has really been uh, just an amazing program that so far has hoped over 130 participants, um, over 85% of whom are housed. And we are very proud that um, all 76 public restrooms in Chula Vista have had graffiti removed and been repainted. Uh, over 54 gazebos have been restored. And uh, our participants are learning not just janitorial work, but also carpentry. Uh, and we are very excited to take this into the next uh, phase with a specialized apprenticeship with Urban Timbers. So, uh, that is all, and thank you so much to all of you for your amazing work and Lucky Duck for the support. Thank you, Marissa, and thanks for sharing those photos. What great, great photos that speak to the power of the program. Um, Angie, last one, Angie with a joined veterans. I think you're on mute, Angie. Sorry about that. Yes, I will share my screen and. I will be actually uh, Stephen's presentation inspired me to get some coffee. And so I'll be really quick because now I need to use the restroom. Um, so, okay. Um, uh, my, again, my name is Angie Stripling. I'm the director of veteran services for, um, for a join. And uh, so what do we do? Um, some of you may be familiar with Veterans Community Services, which is the Veterans Division, um, uh, which was the Veterans Division um, for Community Catalyst. And we recently went through uh, rebranding. And so we are now uh, a join. And our Veterans Division, which started in 2011, uh, serves veterans experiencing or at risk of experiencing homelessness. And our Catalyst Division, uh, which was created as a nonprofit in 1983, serves individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities uh, through a wide range of uh, programs throughout the state of California. Our Veterans Division now, um, as of last year, serves over 800 veteran households um, annually. Okay, and okay. So uh, with that, we decided um, when this opportunity came about, wouldn't it be amazing, you know, to come up with a creative uh, pilot program to, um, to uh, kind of combine uh, the two divisions of our program. And so we decided um, to um, develop a paid job training program, which will lead to permanent employment by a join. Um, and so um, the proposal um, for this program is for 12 veterans experiencing homelessness. Um, so this would be a two month program um, that would be, um, it, again, it would be paid employment training to become a direct service professional. Um, so DSP and our training would provide or will provide 24 hours per week at $15 per hour. Uh, that would be a stipend. And the training will be both web-based and in-person training, which will also include shadowing and um, uh, job training to become a direct service professional um, on the Catalyst Division. Um, we will also, through this uh, program, uh, the individuals in the training would receive, um, they would uh, participate in the eBadge Academy um, for direct and become a direct service professional one. Um, and through that training, they would have that certification. Uh, they will also, um, again, with our experience working with persons or veterans experiencing homelessness um, in our, in our uh, veterans division, we know that it can be challenging to reintegrate veterans back into the workforce, especially when they've been out. And so the main uh, components to this program that I really wanted to see that we have was a lot of support um, and that be in a cohort, but also through HR, through our human resources department, as well as the director and manager for the Catalyst Division. Um, and so we, um, we will implement one-on-one -on -one HR support weekly. Um, and so all of the individuals participating in this program ongoing will have weekly support through human resources. As well, there will be a cohort training um, of the individuals um, participating in the program 
ongoing even after they complete the program with the director and the manager uh, weekly where they can talk about their experiences and some of the challenges um, and uh, that they may have faced in, in, the, uh, in the program and in their employment. Um, and then upon the completion of the two month program, uh, they would be directly hired um, uh, through a join and uh, that uh, position would be paid, obviously <laughs> paid uh, permanent hire uh, with full benefits. Um, so yeah, so we're really excited to get this uh, pilot program uh, started and um, yeah, excited. And we really thank um, uh, Drew and Will for this opportunity. So thank you. Thank you, Angie. All right, Cherie with Computers to Kids San Diego. We've, we've partnered with them in the past, but uh, with all these great programs and thanks for, for giving everybody a, a download on each of these programs. Uh, we want to bring computers to kids in to uh, play a bigger role. So Sheree, can you explain uh, kind of this new partnership? Yeah, so let me just share my screen. Okay, everybody can see. So the partnership with Lucky Duck over the years has really been providing technology to uh, individuals who need it. As many of you who know us, know that we are really the uh, leading uh, nonprofit refurbisher uh, in the nation. We're in the top three. And we take computers in, refurbish them, and then work with local agencies and individuals to provide affordable technology to low-income families. Uh, partly, uh, we've also created a workforce development program in partnership with San Diego Job and some other agencies where they will send paid uh, a paid internship to work with us anywhere from as low as six weeks to three or four months. And we teach them everything they need to know about IT refurbishing, how to take apart a computer, refurbish it, and put it back together and get it out into the community. As a result of COVID, uh, we've also created a shipping uh, warehouse because we've been distributing more than 50,000 computers since uh, COVID started all across the United States. So we also have the ability to teach individuals how to uh, ship and receive and keep a hold of inventory, how to drive a 24 foot truck, uh, how to use the forklift, et cetera. Now the Lucky Duck and C2K partnership is, is really on three levels. We are here to provide computers if your program requires them. I know that some of you uh, stated that you provide computers to your students so that they can learn these skills while they're in your program. We're a great opportunity to provide those systems for you. We also have a set of computers that the Lucky Duck has uh, set aside to be used as incentives. So as your client completes your program, it gives them the opportunity to have a computer of their own that they're able to take with them. It's important to know that all of the computers that C2K distributes uh, not only come with all the software necessary to run them, Microsoft software, but they also come with lifetime tech support. So if there is an issue with that computer, we are there to help them, right? We don't want them to go to the Geek Squad or to pay any money to fix their system. We'll take care of it for them. And then the third part of that is really on the job training. Again, we are a opportunity for anyone to learn IT. Uh, Computers to Kids has hired many individuals who've come through our organization to learn IT. They've been uh, successful at it. It's a natural uh, thing for them. And we've certainly uh, employed some of those as permanent employees. Now, you know, we understand that when you're dealing with someone uh, in the homeless, they, you've got uh, substance abuse, you've got emotional trauma, uh, individuals who may have some personality challenges. We understand that, right? And we're willing to work with these individuals to help them hone those skills that they need to make them a productive employment uh, employee. 
uh, whether it's you know teaching them how to communicate with each other, how to resolve fights, you know when you get into a disagreement with a colleague, we will work with them to be able to make sure that they get the extra love and attention they need to be able to make them the best version of an employee that they can be. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the employment opportunities will teach them warehouse inventory management, shipping and receiving, uh, heavy equipment operation, forklift, how to do sanitation of data, uh, which is really important, how to operate a truck, going out and picking up deliveries and um, delivering them, you know, delivering computers. But also we have resale departments. So we get a lot of electronics in that we can't use in our program. We have a, a resale area. So we actually teach people how to do resale. Again, when they're done with our program, they get a certificate and a letter of recommendation. We have discussed with Lucky Duck that if an individual is placed with us, we will also allow them to have the time while they're with us to seek other jobs. If uh, they decide not to stay on with us or if uh, we don't have a position available for them, we will work with them and give them the extra love and support that they need to be able to go out and get a job before their internship is over. Um, and we think it's really important to know that IT is a very big industry right now. Most uh, companies closed down during COVID. Computers to Kids tripled their employment uh, volume. We uh, ended up hiring uh, staff immediately within the first week, and we've been in nonstop hiring mode. Currently, we have eight positions available for anybody who's in the uh, IT industry, and we know that the person who comes and interns with us may have never touched a computer before, and that's okay. We know the skills that we can teach them. As long as they have the capacity and the desire to learn, we can get them passionate about the IT industry. And it's a great career with wonderful opportunities advancement if they decide to choose that path. Now, I wanted to um, go ahead and share uh, one story uh, well, actually, two. We have um, we have a couple employees that are currently with us that were homeless uh, when they joined uh, Computers to Kids. One, uh, Joseph, who's been with us for nine years, was living in his car for the first two years that he came to work with us. And we currently have James, who is running our warehouse, who is our warehouse coordinator, who is still in a transitional. Uh, housing uh, development, but he came to us as an intern and had never had any warehouse experience, had not had any experience dealing with inventory management systems or anything else, and took to it so easily and effortlessly that we promoted him to the head of the warehouse in less than four months. So it is a, a great opportunity to have people uh, learn a new skill and possibly come join the Computers to Kids family. Thank you, Drew. Thanks so much, Sheree. Thanks to Computers to Kids for this, this special uh, partnership and, and support. So I know we're at our time limit. Uh, I'll just take one more quick minute to try to reiterate that one, if you're one of the beneficiaries of this program and and you put in your budget that you know we need $1,000 or $1,500 for so many laptops, uh, we'll provide laptops in lieu of the cash and we'll get them through you, get them to you through Computers to Kids San Diego. If you did not include that in your ask and say, you know, we really could use some laptops for this program, just uh, uh, email us and we will do what we can to support. Uh, but every single one of these programs uh, now has a, an incentive or a, a free laptop, a two in one yoga laptop through Computers to Kids San Diego to. Uh, reward folks that that move through these programs successfully. And then there's also, as, as Sharif said, employment opportunities at Computers to Kids San Diego as well, an internship. So um, I, I know we were going to talk about or we had on the agenda some, you know, what else should we be thinking about to support this uh, initiative? If you have thoughts or ideas, uh, you're welcome to email me. I'll put my email in, in the chat here. You know, we want to knock down as many uh, uh, barriers as possible to connect as many people as possible to these opportunities that exist. So again, thanks everybody for your time. Uh, appreciate it. Look forward to uh, rolling out these partnerships and getting them off the ground and, 
and really, you know, impacting a heck of a lot of people. So thanks again, everybody. Again, any questions, feel free to email Will or myself. We put our emails in the chat and uh, we will talk with you soon.